my first games were bought to me by my grandfather when I was about five years old, and um, my my grandfather wanted me to learn more about computers. That's what I, you know, and that's where I started gaming. And apparently, um, when I was even that young, I was, you know, I, I had a friend um, who we would, you know, game together and we would talk about games. And apparently, even being, you know, five, six, seven years old, my grandfather would already know that I'm doing this, uh, not in a healthy way. And he would try to protect me from this. He would like my parents wanted to buy a computer for us, you know, because like the only computer we had was at my grandfather's house. But my grandfather was always like against it, and he was like, you know, for, kind of like telling people that that's not something to, you know, that that's going to be healthy for me, even even at a very young age. Yeah, you know, growing growing up, it continued. Um, I when I just got into the middle school, I started like saving up the money from lunch and not just saving up by like you know like not spending all the money but <laughs> basically like not spending any money and just going to internet cafes to play video games with, with that person who I considered my friend at the time um, and we would like you know go and spend as much time as we can playing video games and it was the, the, the huge source of fun for me it was the something that that gave me the chance of running away from reality and um, yeah, I didn't like my reality. I didn't like my my family. There was uh, my mother was very controlling. My mother was always trying to um, tell me what to do. Always trying to yeah, to force me into doing stuff. And my, my grandfather was clearly the same. My father was my father was just like not there. He was like even even when my parents were together, my father. I, I don't I don't really have any memories of my father until till the age of probably twelve or fifteen. And not that he, you know, he wasn't there, but he, he wasn't there for any important events in my childhood. Like, you don't, yeah, you don't have any, like, you know, bright memories of, like, oh, you know, this is this is this nice event, and then there's, like, my father or my, my mother there, and, you know, I don't, I don't have much of that. Like, when, when my parents separated, I started spending more time with my father. It's about the time when I got my, my first uh, computer at home. And that's where my gaming just started. I, I you know, I started gaming in the evenings, I started gaming late at night, uh, I started gaming on the weekends. For me at the time it was it was like a normal thing. I, I remember like when, when it would be summer break from school, I would just play video games all the time if I'm at home, you know. I would just like wake up, I would just start gaming, I would just play till it's late night. And I would go to sleep and during the sleep I I remember that thing that, that was really funny to me, like when I had that like <laughs> I don't remember how old I was, but I, I would like game all day, then I went to bed. And I remember I had that dream, like, oh, I gamed at night, and I gained this thing in this game, and I'm, like, waking up, and the only regret I have is, like, oh, damn, it's probably not going to be saved anywhere online that, that I, you know, I got this one thing that, that I was really dreaming of, and, you know, I, I spent so much time you know, trying to <laughs> get together. That, that was my gaming in the middle school, and also, like, in middle school, I had, I, I had really problems. Um, I had a lot of problems with my classmates. I had, you know, I was bullied at school. I didn't have friends really. Um, yeah, it was just it was just really <laughs> depressing time for me. Like I, I couldn't connect with people. And for me, I think it, it it persisted throughout all my life. I was there was this huge feeling of like I'm not worth it. You know, it's just like I have to be like in order to to even like be on the level field with people who are around me. I just have to be much better. Like if, if I'm much better, if I'm having better results at school, if I'm having better results at sport, if, if I'm, you know, the best in everything, only then, you know, I can get on the on the level field with um, with my friends. There was always um, something very challenging to me, and um, it was, there was this always, like, conditional love of, of, like, yeah, I just have to bring results, otherwise I'm not loved, otherwise I'm not good, and that, that, was, what, that was true um, in my family, that was true, um, you know, in, in relationships that, that, that I built up. That was certainly a huge thing. I went to high school, in high school I started doing more sports, I got more popular, I stopped getting bullied, and um, things kind of started looking up in some sense for a period of time when I got right got into high school, maybe, you know, for the first few months. But then, you know, when <laughs> the funny story that I was telling myself all my life, that, you know, if only I had better social life, if only I had better this, if only I had this, I would stop gaming and things would just get better, you know, and and for me it never was the case, you know, I would get something and then I would hold on to it so badly, like, because I have this fear, fear of abandonment, yeah, I'm just not, not able to hold on to stuff because 
because I'm really trying so bad, and it's and it's really crazy how like um I got into the high school, I made some friends, and then I I was just really holding on to 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 these friends because it was like something super important to me. I would just lie, and you know, I would start I would start lying more and more in order to feel even with these people. And at some point, I lied that you know, like I, I made a huge lie. Like I, I told these guys that I played in the band, you know, played music in the band, and you know, like we were like you know popular and whatever, which wasn't true. I wasn't like the musical instrument I was playing was like, <laughs> you know, I was like barely playing it. And um, yeah, and you know, at some point, people discovered it, and it was discovered that I had a lot of shame connected with it. I couldn't, I just I couldn't hang out with these kids anymore because like they, they knew that. You know, this is a queer lie, and yeah, the, that's that's probably like my, my school years. And then I got into college, and college, I played sports for for my college, and I started playing sports. Like I played in a club. Um, then I also, you know, went to pretty good school, and I was really busy, you know, with stuff. But I always found some time for games. You know, I would basically play late at night every day. I would be late for school. I would I would miss work. I would not show up for games or you know something like this and for for like game games meaning like um you know when my team would be playing i would not show up and i was just becoming really unreliable and i had to make choices like the further i went the further my gaming got worse and i had to make choices in between like huge choice i had um was was in the middle of my second year of my undergrad when um i had to you know i was taking exam uh, and then you know i i i failed the exam that Anyway, I, I started failing exams and things started getting worse. And so um, for me, it was the choice. I either had to, you know, stop gaming and start studying more or um, I had to give up the, you know, like the going to this school, which was pretty good and which also like allowed me to, you know, to like win points and to win points in some sense. Because like I, I thought that I'm only loved in my family if, if I, you know, bring amazing results and I, I couldn't really quit school. Um, and you know that the other choice for me was to to stop gaming, yeah, and I couldn't stop gaming, so I had to start cheat, cheating on the exams in order to not fail out. And for me, it was something like I, I had this like something inside me of like telling me, you know, this is the wrong thing. You don't want to be cheating on the exam. You don't want to be doing something wrong. Yeah, and I had to make the choice to to start doing this in order to continue games. Yeah, that was that was my attitude always. You know, for me, gaming was the most important thing. And um, further continuing, you know, my, my education. And at some point, um, yeah, okay. So at some point, I got the full time job, and at the same time, I was studying full time. And um, it was it was you know like a busy time for me. And that, that was about the time when I decided to stop games um, for, for serious, like by myself. I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop gaming, and I stopped. And um, and there was a pretty long period when when things were decent, maybe you know eight ten months. And then you know at some point. Some you know dramatic event happened in in my life. One of my um one of my close friends killed himself. Um and for me it was just a it was just something my my mind couldn't accept. You know it was like I couldn't understand what happened in there. And um yeah and for me it was it was it was pretty rough. And that that and that's you know at the same time I'm having full time job. You know studying full time. I'm, I'm very busy all the time. And I don't have time to process this you know event. And I started having panic attacks, and um, yeah, at the time my life got really intense. And and then you know I, I was traveling uh, for for like a week or two, and then I was staying at my uncle's house. Yeah, and, and I have a cousin who who gamed a lot. You know, he would play video games, and I wouldn't care much. But you know, like when when I stayed in my uncle's place, like one of the days I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go. You know, like downstairs to the basement where my cousin sits. Let, let, I'll just spend some time with him. I wanna, you know, I wanna be friends with him and. You know, it's a cool thing, and yeah, and I just relapsed into games. You know, I just looked at him, watched him game, and then next day I'm just gaming all day. You know, next thing I know, I quit my job um, in order to continue gaming. Next thing I know, you know, things get worse. I, I have to defend my thesis. Like, you know, I I spend most of my time gaming, not preparing for the defense. You know, like until the like last few days, and just just going crazy. And that's that certainly is you know the the way my life was. You know when. When I would just like leave everything till the very last moment, yeah, you know, I would I would just have I would just give up everything in order to continue gaming, and that's that was my process of decision making. After after I defended like after I got my masters, I had to make a decision what what I should do further, and I got into a PhD program, uh, and this decision wasn't 
you know, wasn't like, oh, you know, I, I'm really interested into physics. I want to be doing PhD in physics or something like this. It was just like, yeah, you know, this is the simplest part. I can just continue gaming. I can just, yeah, I can just live this simple life. I can get in the, into this school easily because I know the person in there who's going to, you know, help me getting in, in this school. And yeah, and I just got in here and I moved. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the PhD program. And, you know, I got into this program. Um, I moved to a different country. I um. Yeah, and you know it was it was the the huge step for me. And so yeah, when I moved here, I got into you know going from going to top level school. I, I got into this school, you know, the one I'm going to right now, which is middle level school. And what what I discovered during my first year when I had to take my you know huge exam at the end of the year, that I actually know most of the stuff and I don't really need to study as hard. And what what happened to me when I discovered it is uh, I just I just stopped showing up for classes. I just basically was sitting at home and just playing video games all the time and not showing up for things i had to choose the advisor throughout my first year i made this decision like i had to i had to do it by june um then i found a way how i can extend it till august and beginning of august i had i had the conf confirmation from my advisor so it was like the very last moment i got in a huge trouble with this like i yeah it was it was it was pretty bad and my life you know here continued in the same manner like i would I would be barely showing up, trying to trying to do things, you know, last minute, you know, barely trying to to get things done. And um, at some point of of me staying here, I I just hit the the moment when I just felt extremely lonely, and I had my life was just so miserable. I I was just you know sitting in my room playing video games, wouldn't really go out with any friends, um, wouldn't really do anything aside of playing video games and going to to lab and going to teach sometimes you know because i just had to do this otherwise i would get in huge trouble and like there, there was just something i would like you know force myself into doing basically and that's um and that's about the time I, I i was in the therapy for about two years at the time and i told my therapist you know i have a problem with games probably and she was like yeah don't don't just don't worry about it just you know just write the list of you know like how, how you gamed all your life you know and i, and I was like um i i I wonder how it helps, but you know, let, let me just try this. You know, may, maybe it will help. And yeah, I just basically wrote my 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 list of things that you know, of the ways how I game. I I basically wrote about roughly stuff you know that I, that I was talking about you know last ten fifteen minutes. And I went through this with my therapist, and that was you know my my first experience of of starting to do step one. And then you know apparently the the more I looked at this, the more I understood that I need help. I went up on on CJ forum and I wrote a post there and there and. And I knew about the forum before, but I never like I, I was sure that you know my knowledge, I understand everything. You know, I I just like, I'm I'm the type of person who is like, okay, you know, my brain is the most precious thing. You know, I'm just I'm gonna like if I have the knowledge, I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna do these things. But the problem with this program is, and with with my you know video game addiction is that if I don't take actions, my things you know things don't get better. You know, I can't. You know, I can't just get better from knowing what I have to do. I have to actually do this. You know, and my my first action that I took that I took was certainly writing up this list for uh, for my therapist. And so um, then I wrote the post on the forum, and then I got into into um, I was recommended to go to this you know to the voice meeting, the the one like like we are in right now. Yeah, and I went to my first voice meeting, and it was very interesting how you know like I. I found some people there who were very similar to me, you know, and um, and it's very interesting how the longer I think it's really funny how how for me I find I find this realization of of you know that addiction is a disease of of not being able to connect, and the way my brain works it just doesn't just really doesn't want me um to connect with other people, you know, if and and even if I'm surrounded by people who are you know like telling my story in different words like. Even even you know in this situation, I have a really hard time connecting this, and that's you know, connecting with these people. Yeah, that's why that's why I need this program, and that's why I need to stay here, and that's why that's why I need steps, and that that's what what I'm going to be talking about further. You know, like how how I started doing step work, how I started getting more connected um, in the fellowship, and um, yeah, I after about two weeks and you know staying in the program, I found a sponsor who just so happened to be um, in my area. And you know, we went out for to get the breakfast together, and for me, it was a very interesting experience because, yeah, I mean, there, there was like it, it was clear that this program is real, and I remember it was really funny how like we went out for breakfast, and then after this breakfast, I'm kind of like, yeah, this felt like a therapy session, but I don't have to pay for it, and that's 
like why why is this happening <laughs> it was really weird and um yeah and it took me a really long time to understand that this person who who spent you know who spends his time with me and like by now he spent you know more like i i was recently counting how much time we spent on step on step five and i think it's like by, by now it's about 100 hours probably and it's just an insane amount of time and um not even counting all the time we spend you know talking getting dinners whatever you know it's just a huge amount of time and the only purpose of this person doing this is is the desire like you know the, the one is desire to be helpful because that's the only way for this person to get better and that's something that, that that i learned here you know the only way for me to get better is to try to be of service is to try to get out of myself is to try to be helpful and that's you know something that that is helping my recovery i think even more than recovery of the person who is asking for help and i, I just feel like it's just such an important part of my recovery you know doing this type of stuff but anyway so c continuing you know i i i did my step one basically you know throughout this breakfast with my, my first breakfast with my sponsor and then we moved on to step two um and we did step two pretty quickly for me um i think it's pretty funny how like always growing up i was never religious and i was never around um surrounded by a religious community and and for me i was kind of like always i always thought of myself as like spiritual but not religious but i i, I was never Apparently, I was never like asking myself, "What does it mean, spiritual?" I would be like, "Oh, you know, I'm, um, I'm just gonna sit. like." Apparently, for me, it was something like, "Okay, that that sounds fancy. I'm just gonna say it because it sounds good." And um, yeah, it's really funny how, um, how yeah, like when, when we were doing step two, I was really happy that you know, like all the like God stuff for me wasn't there, you know, and we were like just kind of like it, for me, it seemed like we were just writing stuff about. Um, about like how my relationship were, were with my family because I was like okay that's the most important thing here you know like I'll, once I'll figure this out I wouldn't have to be an addict anymore I wouldn't have to worry about all this stuff you know yeah and so we were writing all this stuff and things you know it, every time I I continue I, I finish one of the steps things slowly get better and I think around the around the time I got to step three I was yeah, I was pretty desperate to be honest. <laughs> and um, yeah, when we when we started, you know, when we started talking about the like when my sp sponsor started talking about the prayer, you know, about the step three prayer, and you know the fact that like he wanted us to say this step three prayer together, and um, and I looked into this prayer and I was like, wow, that's it's insane. Like, you know, why why do I want to give up my will? You know, I that that's the only thing I have, kind of, you know. And for me, it was it was. It, it took me a certain amount of time, you know, to, to figure out that, you know, this is not just me giving up my life, but this is just me accepting that there is power somewhere outside of me, which is bigger than me. And, and it's not just me, you know, like forgetting all, it doesn't mean that I don't exist anymore. It just, it just means I'm going to be asking for help and I'm, and I'm willing to, to, um, yeah, I'm willing to accept this help. Once I, I accepted this all and once I put it together with like me being spiritual but not religious, um, yeah, things just started getting better. Like after after I did my step two, uh, step three, sorry, that things just, you know, I, I didn't have to be responsible for every single thing that happens, you know, everywhere in the universe anymore. And um, I just, yeah, I could concentrate on my recovery and I could concentrate on myself. And trying to change the only person I can, yeah. And that, that, that was a huge experience for me. And then I got into four and five. For me, it didn't take me long to do my step four, and I I think I wrote it within a week or two. And and then I brought the whole list to my to my sponsor, and we've been doing step five for you know for like eight months now. We just go through like one by one, through entries one by one, and it's been a huge amount of work. And I just um yeah I was I was before this meeting I was looking through my um through my like resentments and um you know like past resentments that I worked through you know like back in you know October November which is like now is June and you know eight months yeah and it's really funny how some of them I don't even remember and some of them I read and I'm that that's like fine for me I'm like oh yeah that I, I had that and that's that's really funny you know how how I could have this type of thing and um you know things. <sighs> It's really insane how like I, I always was just so driven by, by the resentments and fears that I had somewhere inside and I <clears throat> and I couldn't ever recognize that this was the fact and you know really doing four and five helped me get there and I feel like the big example that that, that I have is um, my relationship with my girlfriend actually um, we moved in about uh, when I was about six months sober during the time we moved in 
I, like my, my first few days I couldn't get any work done I, I just I spent all day on the phone I would be just so stressed out I, I would get out of the house and I would just start calling people yeah and I, I would just start calling people and asking for help and um, yeah thank you and um, yeah you know I would just spend most of the day talking to people on the phone and then by the evening I would gather up some energy to spend some time with my girlfriend and then I would have to go through this cycle again and then I would do this again and you know like after after a week maybe of living together things slowly started getting better the next thing and that, that was certainly the huge problem with with boundaries in between me and my girlfriend and there was certainly the the huge amount of resentments that I, that I gathered up against her for for so many years things slowly started getting better I started getting better with my boundaries I started getting better I think for me having a girlfriend and like especially like the way my girlfriend looks or you know all the like aspects of like how how good she is and you know how how successful she is for me it's a huge part of like my self-worth it's like i'm basing my self-worth on stuff outside you know like i, I would be basing my self-worth on you know like on, on the way people talk about me and you know the, the very important part for me is like okay my girlfriend has to look amazing you know like i would go out somewhere if she doesn't look perfect i would just get so angry and yeah you know and that i, I would just for me it would just be like so important to like based my self-worth on, on on her you know yeah i feel like these like after after like half a year like right away i recently celebrated a year of sobriety and and with her you know like things got way better like you know i would be just this is the person who i like being around you know i i like today we spent all day together and and things were fine you know yesterday i came back from work i was i was pretty tired i wasn't like in a good mood i was like okay i need to do something you know and we went out together we you know we just tossed some frisbee around we talked about stuff and and things were just fine you know and for me it's just it's just a huge improvement from like you know i can't after talking for to her for like one hour i have to talk to people for all day and now you know i can i can just go out with her and do things you know and that relationship got like hugely better um and not even saying like you know there are there are like huge improvements certainly in my relationship with my father my relationship with my advisor just such a huge change i was just so afraid of him i would be like i would have my yoga class um in the evening and i would be i would be like he would like start talking to me at five and i would be like okay i'm gonna talk to him for a bit and then i'm gonna go to yoga class and then i'm looking at my watch it's like 5 30 i'm like okay i have to kind of get going here but i can't really do anything you know and i would keep talking and i would just hope that he would get bored you know and i i would never be i think that that's actually a huge thing for me like you know because like i i never was my self-worth was never telling me that I was enough and and that's why I couldn't ever stand up for myself I couldn't I didn't know that I, I could protect my boundaries I didn't know that I could say well I have to get going here and recently I remember um, I had this case when like I had to I had to get into the meeting at some point of the day and I was like okay I have to I have to leave at this amount of time and my advisor really wanted to talk to me he was like really trying and I was like okay I have to go and you know I, I just like started standing up from my chair and he, he continues to talk to me and I'm like I have to go and I would like take two steps closer to the door he would continue talking to me I'm like okay I have to go now and I would just leave <laughs> and for me that's like huge improvement with like the way I set my boundaries and yeah I just feel like my, my life got way better and um, yeah and I feel like I, I found people that that love me here and I could connect with um, here and it just yeah i feel like it just made a huge impact in my life and i never could do this by myself and i'm i'm very grateful for all the people here who, who ask for help who i can ask for help and yeah for just everything that that happened to me so thank you all for being here thank you all for listening